didn't know Donnie Chin. I saw him in Seattle's Chinatown at community events, but I didn't know him. It wasn't until he was murdered that I learned who he really was. I didn't know he grew up and lived in Chinatown, that his life's work was to help those who needed help, that he risked his life to protect a community that was largely unprotected. On Thursday, July 23rd, 2015, at around 3 a.m., Donnie was gunned down. They said he wasn't the target, but a victim, caught in the crossfire. What I've learned since that day is that Donnie was a hero in every sense of the word, that our lives are diminished by his death, that his killing was just another chapter in the city of Seattle's book of neglect for the international district, and that Donnie Chin's killers have never been arrested. But there is one thing I do know about Donnie Chin. He deserves justice. What's known is he was driving past uh, King's Hookah Lounge in the International District, um, responding to gunfire. Um, the police say that he was not the target, but that got caught in the middle of uh, a dispute between two gangs, um, at least one of which was an East African gang. Um, you know, the identities of all the people are not totally known. Um, but from people that I talked to who were not necessarily police but were at the scene right away, it sounds like his car had up to 12 bullet holes in the side of it. So there are some people who think that maybe he was in fact the target, um, although that's not what the police are saying right now. What we know is that he apparently died right on the scene um, before being transferred to Harbor View. But as far as sort of cold hard facts go, that's about as far as the police have gone public. I've sat there and talked to the detectives and up the chain of command with the police department. Uh, I am convinced and part of my job is to push them, push the heck out of them. And I'm convinced that they are doing everything they can to solve this murder. First of all, there was a murder and they've given the family members very detailed and specific information as to what they know and they've gathered an incredible amount of information through camera footage, through interviews, uh, eyewitnesses, and they've gathered a lot of information and they've shared that sort of in an unorthodox manner with the, fam with the victims to let them know they're doing everything possible to solve the murder of this very beloved son of our community. Donnie Chin was shot almost uh, uh, 10 months ago, 10 months ago. The mayor and the police chief made the, had two or three different press conferences about, you know, the need to find the killers and we're going to put the, the, uh, the full, uh, the attention of the police department to find the uh, perpetrators. It hasn't happened, Matt. It hasn't happened. It just really pisses us off. I know that the police are continuing their investigation. I know that they have a general idea of possible groups involved, but I don't think they have an ident identity of the actual shooters. Many of us in the International District have been concerned about um, the, the lack of progress in finding the killers of Donnie, uh, of Donnie Chin. And, um, if this would have happened in another neighborhood like Magnolia, for example, I think the full, uh, the, uh, the, the full attention of the police department would be, would be uh, to find the killers of whoever, whoever it is that was shot if you're in an all-white neighborhood. I mean, in our neighborhood, um, I, think, I, I, I don't think the police department uh, the mayor's office, the police chief, are that serious in their attention to the crime in our community. Well, they're incredibly frustrated. Um, immediately after Donnie's death, they sent sort of as a community of letters to City Hall, sort of outlining the things that they would like to see solved in their community, including um, more patrols, uh, more help for the elderly who might not speak very good English, 
um, and then sort of first and foremost solve Donnie Chin's murder. So the fact that it, that hasn't been solved yet, um, I think for a lot of people in the community is just sort of reinforces their idea that it is not as important of a community as some others in Seattle. The primary goal of Donnie was to protect the, the, the neighborhood. He, he, had, he was acting as the fire, uh, the fire department and the police department in our own neighborhood where uh, members of the police department and fire department get paid to monitor and secure our community. He was doing it. And so if we're for in, in, in his honor, we'd like to see more attention of the Seattle Police Department, in particular, the police department in their presence in this community to take over what we're missing because Donnie's gone. I don't think there'll ever be total closure. He, uh, I don't want there to be closure uh, in terms of he, I want him to live on in spirit in the hearts and minds of everyone. I think we owe him that. Uh, we will get the bad guys. We will get the culprits. You know, I, I personally believe in karma and I believe that uh, justice will be served. It is always served, sometimes a little longer than usual. I think that so long as people expect that the killers are not going to be found, you know, that reduces the interest and the pressure that needs to go on to uh, the police in the city to find his killers. And I, I want to make sure that he's not forgotten and that that effort, the pressure to find his killers is, is maintained. There's hope that Donnie's killers will be apprehended. That would be justice. Throughout his 40 years of service to the International District, Donnie Chin worked for another kind of justice. To level the playing field for a neglected neighborhood. To bring fairness to a system that was never fair. To bring justice to a community whose questions are answered in action, not words. To create a neighborhood where language and culture are not barriers to progress and safety. We need to carry on his work. That would be justice for Donnie.